Peloton. We are really excited today because we just completed a massive update for Tempo. Uh, I think you guys are really gonna love it. So uh, let's just dive on in and go through the update point by point. All right, first up, uh, we added the ability to do a lot of different time signatures. Um, before we were kind of limited to four, four or six, eight, if you know a little bit of music theory, uh, but now you can basically do uh, just about any time signature that you would need. Uh, let's load up a beat here. I have 120, just the default beat loaded, but I slowed it down to 88 beats per minute. Let's just uh, make it sound a little bit more fun just while we listen. Okay, that'll be a little more fun to listen to. So this is just a 4-4 beat. And so now if you change your DAW to say 5-4, it's going to take this 4-4 beat and make it fit into 5-4. Um, it's not black magic. It's not gonna reimagine and get creative and make a 4-4 beat into a creative version of it. It's just gonna squeeze it into you know the 5-4 uh, time signature. So let's turn the click on, you can hear this. So from there, if you wanted to actually make more of a 5-4 beat, you can start messing with the uh, steps here. But I mainly just wanted to show you that it will adapt, uh, Tempo will adapt to whatever time signature you put into your DAW. If you are using Contact Standalone, um, the, I think the default is gonna be 4-4-120. Uh, uh, okay, so let's listen to this now. So there you go. Uh, so you guys will have a lot of fun with that. That was something that was requested quite a bit. We think this uh, is gonna make it a lot more flexible for you. Okay, next up, uh, we have created the ability for you to make your own kits. Uh, so if you loaded up something like this heavy set kit, but you wanted to make some changes to it, you can. Uh, let's just change the kick to this iPhone kick, uh, the snare to the Slingerland. I'm just kind of picking things at random you know, whatever. Uh, so now uh, all you have to do is go up to your cog wheel here and you can save kit as, make a name for it, my cool kit, and then save it. And now you're gonna find uh, your kit right here under the user kits. Um, so that is a new function we think you guys will love. Okay, the next one, this is kind of a big one that uh, a lot of you guys asked for. And, um, you know, the more I've messed with tempo, the more I felt like, uh, yeah, this was pretty important. So um, you see these lock buttons uh, on the kit selection in sound design. So it doesn't actually lock it, you know, where you can't move anything. Everything is, is, uh, is still totally flexible. But what it does is when you load a beat that is kind of attached to a certain kit in sound design, you can lock that so you can browse the different beats, but keep the exact same kit with the exact same sound design settings. Um, so let's go ahead and show an example here. Uh, let's do something, since I'm in the 80s, 88, let's get something close to that. Let's try, uh, let's hear this one, Jigsaw. Okay, so we wanna, let's say that we want, we just love the sound of that, but we wanna hear that sound on different beats. Let's lock the kit, lock the sound design, and let's hear another one. And, and that would stay the same. You can still, like I said, make adjustments if you wanted it more distressed. It's just gonna hold that position. Now, do note that the percussion um, is different. Uh, like di I was using different percussion lanes for different things on different beats, so your per percussion may change. Uh, that's because um, you know whatever's happening in the beat maker lanes is going to vary from beat to beat. So just be aware of that. 
Okay, the next thing I just want to mention, I don't think I'm going to demonstrate it, but if you are someone that uh, decides to use the multi-output routing option, you send your kick to one output and your snare to a different one, you have all this routed. Now, um, when you uh, switch the beat or anything else, it will hold on to your output routing so you don't have to redo that every time you switch a beat. Uh, we think that'll really save you a lot of time. Okay, next is a fun little trick for the beat maker. If you hold shift and move a step, it will kind of keep everything relatively the same. And uh, let me show you a better example here. So hold down shift and drag, and it's gonna kind of keep that relative relationship. Uh, just shift and drag. Okay, this next one is a really big one that a lot of you are asking for. and. I have to say that whenever we release an instrument, we don't we don't always know, like I know how I am using the instrument, you know, when I'm making demos and stuff, but I don't always know how you are going to use the instrument. And I found out that uh, a lot of you like to use tempo in manual mode. You like to play in the beat with your fingers. I don't because I'm just not very good at it. Like I've said before, I'm supposed to be because I, I was a piano major in college, but I am completely garbage at it. So, um, but that is, that's been important to a lot of you. And so we've uh, added a few things to this MIDI drag option. For one, there's um, now an icon. So it's just plainly visible to see. It was kind of like a hidden, you know, thing, but now we, we gave it its own button. Uh, also, um, any information in the, in the feel lane will be translated into the MIDI data. So um, let's just hear this uh, measure real quick. Now let's drag it into the timeline. And let's hear it, it should sound the same. So that is gonna be really, really helpful for a lot of you. And also, uh, we're very excited. This took, this took some thinking and some work, but we figured it out. Um, the inverse is also true, so that if you uh, if you play, if you record a, a beat with your fingers, I'm gonna go ahead and do it and embarrass myself. I guess I played two measures there, but that's fine. I know I'm gonna have to move this kick. Okay, move this over to the downbeat make it exactly a measure. And now let's throw it into an empty lane here real quick. Now let's look at the feel. And you can see that the feel um, has been translated into this lane. Uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna basically translate whatever rhythm you play, the looseness and everything will be included when you drag it into the beat maker, which is really exciting. If you didn't mean to play out of time, all you have to do is uh, click the feel button, drag your mod wheel down, and you're quantized. And there you go. Um, I would also mention, this is kind of a little thing, but maybe a big deal to any of you that are actually editing your MIDI data in your DAW. Um, we made it so that every hit is essentially half the length of each step. Um, it doesn't have any effect on the sound, but it just keeps notes from overlapping because in certain DAWs, when you get MIDI overlapping notes, sometimes they don't trigger. So uh, we set up the script to where, you know, if you played and held a whole note, it'll show up as a half note just to make sure uh, that they don't overlap. And once again, that will not affect the decay or anything. Um, it will trigger equally no matter how short or long the, the MIDI note is. Okay, one more thing about the MIDI drag function, it, it will, intuitively figure out the subdivisions that are needed. I think that before you needed to have like, um, basically your beat maker already set up with the right number of subdivisions and now it will just read that. Uh, let me see if I can give you an example. Okay, so I played a little hi-hat pattern with uh, some 16th notes in there. You can see that uh, currently um, the hi-hat lane is set up for eighth notes when you drag this in you're gonna see this switch and now it's playing uh, 16th notes. So just another little shortcut that's gonna save you a lot of time. Okay, so there are two caveats that I wanted to mention about the MIDI import function for the beat maker. For one thing, we really wanted to make it so that you could import unquantized beats that maybe you played in manually or maybe you had uh, a beat 
uh, a MIDI beat stored from somewhere else. We wanted it to import in the way that you played it. And in order for that to work, we needed to kind of find a cutoff for what would be interpreted as a subdivision and what is interpreted as feel, you know, an intentional lag or swing of the beat. So for that to work, we decided that we needed to make a cutoff at 16th notes. So if your beat has 16th notes in it, you can import it in just fine. If it uses 32nd or 64th notes, you may need to adjust the steps and subdivisions to make that work after you uh, import it in. Because especially at you know, any BPM over like 110, a 64th note like the, the software cannot read you know, your intentions as far as if you meant to be a 64th note late or if that was just a little bit of feel, swing, lag that you added in. So because it can't read your intentions, we had to do our best to find like a cutoff that was reasonable. So anything up to 16th notes, totally fine. Anything above that, you may need to adjust uh, things in the beat maker. And the second thing is, uh, for these examples, I'm using Cubase because it has a really uh, nice, easy uh, drag and drop MIDI import export feature where I can just drag from my timeline onto the beat maker. Not every DAW is gonna respond that way. You may have to actually export your MIDI. Uh, you will know how to import and export MIDI from your DAW, but I didn't want to try to cover all of them in this video. Um, so just make sure you're aware of that. But regardless of whatever DAW you're using, make sure that your MIDI event the, the rectangle that kind of holds the many notes in your timeline, make sure that that's snapped to a, a downbeat and make sure you don't have any other random notes before your performance starts because wherever your first note is, that's what it's gonna throw onto the downbeat. So quantize it to the downbeat and then make sure that there's nothing else until the start of your, your beat. Okay, and next, uh, I'm not gonna make you wait any longer for this one because this might've been the thing um, that we heard the most consistently, and that is to make it so the noise does not play constantly. Um, I heard you and uh, we have changed that now. So when you turn the noise up, you will not hear anything uh, until you hit the playhead. So here I have all three noises going and now it stops. Nice and nice and quiet, nice and peaceful, just the way you guys want it. We have also increased the velocity sensitivity for all the drums. So now um, you'll just get a lot more dynamic range, you know, when you're playing a beat. Um, oh, also, sometimes we get emails from people that are like, oh, I can't hear any differences in the velocities. You're not going to if distress or saturation is like turned all the way up. But uh, that's because it's totally squashing the sound. And so uh, with these turned down, you can hear this a little bit better. So huge velocity uh, change, much more sensitive now. Do note that if you are loading up um, beats uh, that you've made or that we made, it is gonna be more dynamically responsive now. So the quieter notes are gonna be even quieter. You may wanna do some adjustment there. Um, or you may not. Uh, maybe it'll just uh, maybe it'll just sound exactly how you wanted it to from the beginning. Okay. Next, we increase the clickable range for these steps because when you get into sixteen steps and four subdivisions, um, it seemed like the clickable range was kind of a little bit to the uh, to the left. Now it's centered, so it's just a little bit easier to, to click around and it avoids the accidental clicks that were so easy before. So now uh, the range is wider where you can click. I know that this gets pretty tiny, but we, we kind of needed 64th notes to be a possibility. So uh, this should help compensate for that. Okay, and we're just about to the end here, but uh, another thing you can do is that now all of this drum detail stuff can be automated uh, to your keyboard. So if you wanted to change the tightness of a, a snare, um, you know, throughout the song, you can do that. You're gonna uh, control click or right click if you're on a PC, learn MIDI CC automation, and then you can assign it to one of the knobs on your keyboard. Okay, I guess that's gonna do it for our update walkthrough. We've just been really, really thankful for your response to Tempo, and we just wanted you to know that, you know, we are listening to you. We want to make this instrument the best that it possibly can be, and I feel like because of your feedback, 
uh, tempo is better. Um, we, this is a, a pretty big improvement. We're very, very excited to, to share it with you. As we are working on other instruments for the future, always let us know how you are using these instruments. That's all really good information for us. So uh, please always let us know what are the things that you're most excited about? What functions do you use the most? Um, you can, uh, if you haven't purchased Tempo, tell it to an audio.com, check it out. We've got demos. If you haven't watched the rest of our Tempo videos, there's plenty on YouTube and the website. Uh, so we appreciate you. Thank you so much. The Tempo update is out now.